Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church Cooperstown on this Monday in Holy Week. My name is Dane Boston. I'm the rector of Christ Church, and I'm delighted to be able to welcome you as we celebrate and commemorate these most significant days at the heart of our faith. Holy Week begins very simply on these quiet weekdays. After the great hubbub of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem remembered yesterday on Palm Sunday, we now see Jesus at home with his friends, his disciples, his closest companions. We see Jesus in quiet, simple moments preparing for what is to come. And we also see the forces gathering together against him conspiring to put him to death. I hope you'll come back each day of Holy Week. See all the resources available on our website and on our YouTube channel. Subscribe so you don't miss any of these opportunities to worship together in our homes as we practice social distancing and keep one another safe. And we also walk with the Lord to his passion, his death, and through them to his resurrection. Welcome. Our worship begins on page 39 of the Book of Common Prayer. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Turning in the prayer book to page 41, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. 
O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this day is Psalm 36, found beginning on page 632 of the prayer book. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes that his hateful sin will not be found out. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has left off acting wisely and doing good. He thinks up wickedness upon his bed and has set himself in no good way. He does not abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O Lord. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. See how they are fallen, those who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> A lesson from the book of Isaiah. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light to the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here endeth the lesson.
Our first canticle is canticle number one on page 47 of the prayer book. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frosts, bless ye the Lord. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye people of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and magnify him forever. A lesson from the Gospel according to John. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Here endeth the lesson.
Our second canticle is canticle number four on page 50 of the prayer book. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed is found beginning on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, who dividest the day from the night and turnest the shadow of death into the morning, 
Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done thy will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I now invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving either silently or aloud. In this Holy Week, we pray most especially for the Church throughout the world and its witness to Christ crucified and risen. We pray for the nations of the earth and most especially for our nation, for our leaders that they may be guided by wisdom and act with compassion and understanding. We pray for this community, for all those in Cooperstown and Otsego County who are enduring social distancing with grace and good cheer, for all those who are struggling in this time, who are depressed or isolated or lonely, and we ask that God would comfort them with the sense of his presence and the knowledge of his love. We pray for all who are sick, suffering, fearful, and anxious. We pray for all of those who put their own lives at risk to ensure the continuity of our lives. Most especially for doctors and nurses and all healthcare professionals. For grocery store workers and gas station attendants and those who serve at pharmacies and in other essential services. Guide, guard, and protect them, O Lord. We pray for those who have died, for those who have fallen a victim to the present pandemic, and to those who have died of other causes, whose families suffer for lack of gathering, to remember, to grieve, and to celebrate. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. We conclude our time of prayer in the words of the General Thanksgiving, found in the prayer book on page 58. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. 
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May I speak in the name of Christ crucified. Amen. It almost seems like there's going to be a happily ever after sort of ending. John's gospel for 11 relentless chapters builds up from simple miracles like turning water into wine to more impressive miracles like healing the sick. Finally, to the greatest miracle of them all, the raising of Lazarus in chapter 11, the restoration of the family that is for Jesus the closest thing he has to a home and a happy life. And then here in chapter 12, it almost seems as if there's going to be a happy ending. Here on Monday and Holy Week, we're almost permitted to believe that Jesus is going to be able to laugh and eat and drink in the home of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Perhaps even to live out his days there in Bethany. Perhaps he's done what he came to do. Perhaps the mission has been accomplished in the declaration he has made, the display of power that he has given us over death itself. Lazarus lives. He sits at the table and eats with Jesus. Maybe this is what he came for. We know it can't last. The happy domestic scene that we see there in the house at Bethany will be shattered by the days to come. John tells us that it was only six days before the Passover, the great pilgrimage feast of the ancient Jewish faith, when the whole nation came together at, at the temple in Jerusalem to proclaim what God had done for their ancestors long ago, how God had rescued them and delivered them from the power of the Egyptian Pharaoh, from slavery, from death itself. The feast of the Passover, the Jewish people remembered how God had made them his chosen nation. Yes, he had called Abraham generations before, but it is in passing through the Red Sea on dry land that they become the nation of Israel, a free people serving God alone. Jesus is there in Bethany, not far from Jerusalem. Six days before that great feast. And as he sits with his friends at the table, we think to ourselves, perhaps this is the end of the story. Perhaps there's a happy ending. We know it can't last. Because we know that all of those great signs and symbols, all of those deeds of power, even the raising of Lazarus itself, are simply there to point us on to what Jesus will do this week. They are all given so that we might see and know and believe that it is God incarnate. The Word made flesh who will go up to the cross and offer himself for the salvation of the world. For now we see Jesus at home with his friends, enjoying a meal. We see Jesus in the same posture, the same situation we find ourselves in. And even when Judas Iscariot grumbles about Mary showing an elaborate expression of love and devotion for Jesus, even as the leaders and chief priests and elders of the people begin to plot and plan, even so we hold in our hearts this image of Jesus there with his friends. 
The peace of the scene will be shattered by what comes in the succeeding days. But the peace of our hearts, the peace of our homes, has been established by what Jesus does next. Mary saved the nard to anoint him for his burial. Mary will rejoice when that burial is undone, when death itself is not simply defied as at the tomb of Lazarus, but defeated as it shall be at the tomb of Jesus. On this Monday in Holy Week, let us rest in that domestic scene in our own homes where we find ourselves quite often these days. Let us rest with Jesus and his friends. But let us not hold on to this scene. Great and terrible events are on the horizon. But the glory of God will soon be manifested anew. We know that's true in the story of Jesus. We pray that that may be true for each and every one of us this Holy Week and in eternity. God bless you and keep you as you walk with the incarnate Lord to Calvary. God bless you and keep you in the midst of whatever you are suffering. God bless you and keep you in the arms of the risen Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.